30 odd minutes is sponsored in part by Digital Dowsing. Who are you powered by? For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy to ghostly phenomena in our own backyard, we will dive into our psychic abilities and explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. <coughs> oh, man. Yeah, that never gets old. That's wow. a fine landing. Fine landing. Where are we? Whoa, that looks like a headless horseman. And is that Ichabod Crane? Ooh, we must be in Sleepy Hollow, New York. Sleepy Hollow, New York. The tale of the headless yeah. horseman. Washington Irving. This is yeah. great. One of the great stories. Definitely. Been made into movies. Yep. Uh, yep. But uh, I remember reading the... I read it not that long ago. It still holds up. I think it was fourth grade. We were sat down just before Halloween and had it read to us. I remember being spooked by it. It's awesome. Almost 200 years old, and it's still spooky. But we're not just talking about Sleepy Hollow. We're also talking about witchcraft. Very cool. I know. Very so, cool. Headless Horsemen, Witches, Ghosts, oh my. Yeah. Speaking of witchcraft, Dr. Dreck has been up to a little witchcraft himself down in the lab. Oh, God, what's this all about? Take a look. Greetings, oddballs. Dr. Dreck here. We're talking about witches today. And, uh, you know, I've always been fascinated by their ability to fly on brooms. I mean, it's cheaper than a car. So, well, why can't we do that? So... I was going to figure out how to uh, rig up a, a broom, but we don't have any brooms here on the ship. But I did find a whisk broom, so I figured this could be a good test. So I put all my little gadgets in the handle here to work. When I turn it on, you know, I should feel a, a little tug, so that then I'll know I'm on the right track. So let's give it a test here. <laughs> Oh, oh, boy, that was exhilarating. What a brush. I can't believe we trust him with our technology. Yeah, that's why we didn't give him the full-size broom. Here's the funny thing. What our audience may not realize is that our guests are watching all of this right from the beginning. Yeah. And I always wonder, like, are they offended when they see Dr. Drek? I hope not. But, you know, I can see her smiling, even if our audience can't, so I'm <laughs> thinking maybe it went okay. But, good, uh, good. Uh, Drek is Drek. He is. He is that. All right, let's get into this. We're on a spaceship. Damn it, we should do something spacey. Definitely. Okay, so you've no doubt heard the tale of the Headless Horseman of Sleepy Hollow. Published in 1820 by Washington Irving, this classic tale of horror is set in the small town of Sleepy Hollow, New York, which is not too far upstate from New York City. Today, Sleepy Hollow looks a lot different than it did two centuries ago but the mystery and intrigue are still there. Tonight's guest is known as the Witch of Sleepy Hollow. She's here to talk about some of the local haunts, plus take us through a witch's approach to the paranormal. Please welcome, beaming to us live from Sleepy Hollow, New York, Crystal Madison. Hey, Crystal. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Were you offended by Dr. Drek? Not at all. I thought it was hilarious. Well, good. You know, the whole... You should have given him a bigger bro- broom, though. <laughs> no, you don't know Drek. No, he makes people disappear. It's, yeah. it's almost like witchcraft. That can be yeah. a good thing sometimes. <laughs> it kind of is. So you're the Witch of Sleepy Hollow. When did you get called to witchcraft? Oh, um, I was actually raised by witches. Okay. Um, both my mother and my grandmother were witches, uh, My grandmother on my father's side was a Hungarian gypsy. My grandfather on my mother's side, although he wasn't a witch, he was Native American. So it's always been a part of my life. So born into it. And, you know, we live in a time where it's not too bad to be a witch. No. I mean, you know, have you ever felt persecution for for being a witch? Um, I think I've probably been one of the luckier ones. I haven't. Right. At all. Okay. So Sleepy Hollow, let's start here, and then we're going to talk more about using witchcraft and the paranormal and things like that. But I want to start with Sleepy Hollow because, seriously, Washington Irving is one of my favorite authors. Yeah. That story, like, you could read it again tomorrow, and it's still be like, whoa, it's still that good. It used to scare me to death as a kid. <laughs> he, he still scares me to death. It's still Let, creepy. So let's talk about the story behind the story. First of all, Washington Irving, you've got, you've got wonderful cemeteries there in Sleepy Hollow. And, of course, uh, we've got the grave of Washington Irving himself. Look at him. There he is. There is. Well, there's his grave. That's where he is now. 
Um, and there's the man himself, Washington Irving. So what's the story behind the story? Was there a real inspiration for the Headless Horseman? Sure there was. Um, during the Revolutionary War, the, uh, the British had initiated some help or initiated uh, asking for help from the Haitian um, uh, soldiers, I guess. Right. They were mercenaries. Yes. Um, and they brought them over. And during one of the battles, one of them unfortunately lost his head to a cannon. Um, during the course of that, one of the more prominent families' uh, houses had set fire. And the daughter went running back into the house thinking her baby was still inside. And um, one of the other soldiers said, no, no, someone, one of these guys got the baby out, the baby's in the barn. They couldn't find the man, the baby was safe. They couldn't find the man. The only thing that they could figure was it was the guy that lost his head. He was the only casualty. So um, Ichabod Crane was actually a real person. <laughs> he was actually, a, I think he was a general um, and one of Washington Irving's chain of command, and he wasn't a very nice man. He, he did not appreciate uh, being made into this kooky character that he was made into in the story. Right. And, so. and, if, and, and, this, and of course, the, the characters are so, they're so timeless. But so mm-hmm. I understand there's actually a, a, a commemorative memorial where the, where the Hessian lost his head? Yes. Yes, uh, it's a it's a replica of the cannon that did it. Although they they believe that's the exact spot, um, or at least really close to it. I mean, thank God for the his, historians. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. No, who, who are guessing anyway? Yeah, I mean, like, it's yeah. a battle. I mean, it's, a, it's right. hard to remember what happened. He, in he a only mentions it briefly in, in the story. Um, the actual, you know, he doesn't really get down to the actual location. Right. In the story. And, and, and you can't separate this story from Sleepy Hollow today, right? I mean, it's ever present in town. It is. It is. Especially during October. Um, we have Horseman's Day, where we, there's a fellow that dresses up as the Headless Horseman. He's actually led a 10K race. Right. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. And there he is. Look at that. There he is. <laughs> yeah. There he is. Even your police department has that as their, uh, their patch on their uh, uniform, correct? Yeah, he's the school mascot, too. Oh, Can you that's imagine great. that? Being oh, the opposing great. team and, and, you know, here comes your, your ram and then out comes the headless horseman. <laughs> I, see, but I that's love awesome. that. So here's the thing, it's though. Cool. I mean, we've talked a lot about legends on, on, on 30 Odd Minutes, and, and the story becomes so powerful that it seeps into the culture, it seeps into yeah. the community. They feel ownership of it, pride of it, to the yeah. fact that it's, the, it's on the police cars, it's, it's the high school mascot, and so on. And it becomes real in a very tangible way. And I think sometimes a ghost story is like that. Sure, you know, sure. You, you, you talk about a thing over and over until it becomes this real thing. And I'm sure Sleepy Hollow has got uh, no shortage of its haunts. I know you've got, um, you've got cemetery tours there and things like that. When you think about the paranormal in Sleepy Hollow, what comes to mind uh, for you, Crystal? When I think about the paranormal, um, I think history. Mm-hmm. I think they still have a story to tell. Um, and I, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. You have Washington Irving's house, um, Sunnyside, ironically. That's what it's called. Right. But he, he and his family, there it is. He and his family uh, worked very hard. It was just a small cottage when they first acquired it. And it's said today that, you know, I mean, people have seen full-bodied apparitions there, um, still doing tasks. They believe that it's his nieces still walking around the house, taking care of things. And some people have even claimed to, to still see him. So Washington Irving uh, haunting his old mansion, I mean, it, it's so common. And one of the things, too, we've seen before is we, I've called it most famous phenomena, right? Yes. Where you've got a house that with something bumps in the night and you attribute it to the most famous person who's ever exactly. lived there, yep. uh, whether it's them or not. But this is a town that, that uh, reveres this guy, that takes its identity from Washington Irving. So why wouldn't he stick around, right? The place exactly. he loved, yeah. the town that, that loves him back. Liberty. <laughs> yeah, that loves. Even two hundred years later, <laughs> right? Oh, right. And have you encountered his spirit, uh, Crystal? No, I haven't. I actually, I've never actually been inside Sunnyside yet. Shame on me. We will make some phone calls. Yes, and uh, <laughs> we know some very powerful people. We've got a spaceship. Awesome. Well, we know powerful people who know Flying powerful. Flying over. Yes. Yeah, and, and, we'll, and we have a spaceship. We could blast yeah. a hole right through the sky. That's true. It'd be <laughs> easy to crash into that, that thing. Uh, but so I, I, now, in, in addition to being a witch, you're also a psychic medium as well. Um, do those go hand in hand? You know, do, you, do you think that's a, a, a byproduct of witchcraft? Or? Most witches are psychic, and, and I find a lot of times not all psychics veer towards witchcraft, but many do. 
okay. um, because they, they grow up knowing they have certain gifts, but they don't understand them. Um, unlike other religions, which, which is do embrace that. Um, and yeah. It, it, and so my understanding is that witchcraft is such a, an individualized, uh, form of spirituality, right? I mean, you, you do what works for you. And right. when we're talking about the paranormal, how do you approach it through witchcraft? What do you mean? How do I approach it? So, you know, for example, we have a lot of ghost hunters watching our, our show and they've got tons of gear. They've got K2 meters. They've got uh, thermal cameras and all yeah. kinds of equipment and stuff like that. And for them, that's the tangible way that they're going to try to interact with spirits, yeah. with haunts and, and ghosts and so on. How would you do the same thing using witchcraft? Um, first of all, with respect, a great amount of respect for both the property owners as well as the spirits inside. Um, blindly, I usually, I, I don't want to know anything when I'm going on a location. Um, a lot of times, too, uh, a witch does know how to remove a spirit from a location. Um, I've had to do that a few times. Um, but, I mean, what it, what it all comes down to is it, it needs to come from a place of respect for both and for the investigators and for everybody involved. Right. Um, I, I imagine, you know, any, anybody would get freaked out if somebody showed up, you know, doing a rain dance in the middle of the yard and, and banging on drums and making all kinds of noise and, and you know, maybe stirring some other things up if they didn't know what they were doing. Right. No, understood. Now, when you say remove some spirits, what's involved in that? Um, sometimes it's a, it's a simple smudging. It's an old Native American practice. Uh, it's very common. Sometimes that's all it takes, and asking them to move on. Sometimes it, it actually has to do with a form of an exorcism, not the type that you would see in Hollywood. Right. Uh, they're usually not that dramatic. <laughs> um, you know, the witch way. Uh, it's not usually with, with any Bible or anything like that. We do have certain methods that we use. Hey, well, to talk us through one. You know, give us an example. If you went to a, a, a home where you felt this spirit needed to move on or the family was afraid or, or something like that, uh, I know intent is a critical part of, of everything that you do because you're talking about something spiritual and right. just saying words without believing the, you know, the, the, the methods behind it is, is meaningless. Yeah, just words. Right, just words. So uh, are, are there visuals I mean, or, or is it more just like a, a prayer? Um, sometimes there are visuals. Sometimes, like I said before, the smudging. Um, sometimes the simple smudging doesn't do it. Uh, and then you really have to kind of roll up your sleeves and go in and do a thorough spiritual cleansing of the house. That can involve uh, boiling water and squeezing lemon juice into it and washing down every surface of the house, every drawer of the house, every cabinet of the house, um, going from room to room, saying a prayer and sprinkling sea salt, which is um, spirits usually don't like, uh, and then doing a smudging and, and going from there. There's different stages. I mean, you... you I, I try to find out what the spirit wants first. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's a matter of negotiation, um, but usually a, a, a very demanding presence coming and saying, you need to leave, you need to get out, you don't belong here. Right. We'll do it. So, Andrew, I know you've worked with a witch on an yes. investigation, yes, right? Yes, I have a very good friend and colleague named Pat Morgan from mm -hmm. Forster, Rhode Island. She's, uh, she's in her early 80s, and she is a, a genuine witch. And I have sat in her uh, her warm, cozy little uh, living room with her cat and discussed the paranormal and just recently brought her in on a case I've been working on for five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, she brought her granddaughter along, and the two of them just absolutely blew me away. I kept quiet. I didn't give them any details. I let them loose on the property. And the information that came back, we understood every word of it, and it gave me goose flesh of the accuracy of what she hits. So when they're going through the property, is it any different than bringing a psychic in at that point? I mean, could... Well, Pat herself is, is a, a psychic medium, a right. spirit medium. Uh, so uh, not too different. No, I, I, I don't think even Pat would separate what she's, she does. But, you know, as Crystal was just talking about with, you know, sometimes it's good to coax these folks along because they've been there too long and they may be interfering with the people living there. So we're going to be bringing Pat back, and she's going to be using her smudging techniques. She's going to have a sit-down talk with some of these people and suggest that it's time to move on because they're, they're getting a little too much. Right, <laughs> right. Interesting. Well, speaking of moving on, Andrew, you have to go take care of the news That's right, right now. That's right. It's time for the news, folks. Crystal, stay with us. We'll be right back right after the news.
Another ghostly image has shown up on a cell phone, only this time the identity of the spirit is believed to be known. A 34-year-old Romanian woman named Gina Mihai was in her kitchen making donuts when she pulled her phone from her pocket and discovered this creepy selfie on its screen. She immediately recognized the face as that of her deceased grandmother who died three years earlier. What really bothers her about the distorted image is that there appears to be something coiled around her grandmother's neck, which looks somewhat like a snake. Gina took the image to a local fortune teller who told her that her grandmother is being punished on the other side of the veil for sins committed when she was alive. The granddaughter then realized that since her grandmother's passing, she has not participated in the yearly custom known as the service of the alms. This custom involves bringing food to the graves of family members, and since Gina was cooking at the time the picture appeared on her cell phone, she believes it was her grandmother's way of reminding her. Many folks from the town have agreed to help by going to church and praying for the old woman's soul. Gina has also been bringing donuts to her grandmother's grave every day as an offering to make up for all the previously missed visits. Even for the dead, donuts have a strong mojo. I'm Andrew Lake, and oddly enough, that's the news. And we're back with Crystal Madison. She's a psychic medium. She's the witch of Sleepy Hollow, New York. We're talking about Sleepy Hollow. We're talking about witchcraft and the paranormal. Crystal, when you see photos like that, uh, does, does it pique your interest? Do you think we're, we're moving into a, a whole new realm here, or is it just, uh, I don't know, could be photoshopped? I'm very wary of photos. <laughs> sure. Um, especially cell phone um, photos. Uh, not to, not to you know say that she was lying or anything. I don't I you know, I don't know her. Um, but a photo can easily be distorted, even on a cell phone. I've had them come up a few times where I, I'm I'm a healthy skeptic when it comes to to spirit photos. Sure, even, understood. Even as a witch. <laughs> yeah, and I've got this really cool app on my phone. It'll put the ghost <laughs> into any photo you yep. take. Yep. You can move it around just right. It's all, it's great fun. My seven year old daughters petrified there's something following her all the time and it's just how i get her to go to bed i say look i'm going to take a picture of you and the only way the ghost goes away is if you go to bed oh no it's really horrible but effective a little bit of sinister dadhood and i don't recommend it to anyone (laughs) who's not me uh all right so let's talk a little bit more about witchcraft because you you sent us a photo of you uh at at an altar uh honoring the dead and i want to understand more if we could eric if we could bring it up that's uh salem but close different altar um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> We're looking at number 12. 12. There it is. There. So, um, so tell us about, you know, how, how do you honor the dead? Tell us about your altar. Well, I, I do keep, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I do keep the spirit, uh, an ancestry altar in my home. Um, and at least daily I go to it. It has the pictures of those I've known in life who have passed on. It has their ashes. I have ashes of people I have I've never met. Um, I do get people that send me their their loved ones' ashes to add to the altar. Um, and what I do is I, I light candles for them. I burn incense there that that's appealing uh, to to spirit. Um, and I, I ask them for for various things. Sometimes I ask them just for their guidance or for their protection or for their help with a certain situation. And um, this particular picture was during our gathering um, on All Hallows Eve. Um, I actually had the whole the whole group there, and um, yeah, it was just it was a very nice way for us to honor them on that night because Halloween is our New Year. Samhain, right? I'm sorry. Samhain. Correct. Yeah. The, um, You're gonna slip one by me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I was you. It's not our first rodeo. <laughs> um, well, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm trying to, you know. Um, but that's something that we do. There's always an altar uh, to the spirit there. We, we call upon them. We ask them to join us. There's, a, you know, a whole separate... Sometimes we leave food and other offerings at the altar, apples, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, and it's, it's a really nice way to remember them. Sure. Now, so, as Samhain, of course, is the... Uh, it is, it's the, the... Before there was Halloween, there was Samhain. Yes, right. It's thousands right. of years old, and it's the time when the Celts believe the veil between the world of the living and the world of the dead is at its thinnest, which it's is... Still, and even if you think that's all bunk, and you're, you're welcome to that opinion, we've collectively, globally yes. agreed on that because that's when every horror movie comes out. That's right. In October, that's when all the Halloween decorations come yep. out. That's when we send our kids trick-or-treating. 
which is a tradition that goes back thousands of years and pieces and, and things like that. And everyone becomes a legend tripper to their favorite uh, right. haunted location. Everyone goes to haunted houses, whether yeah. it's the fun house, you know, put right. on locally, right. or whether it's, you know, oh, let's go see a real haunted house. Right. Uh, we, we have collectively agreed that this time is, is it, it, we've made it so. Sure. It, whether it really is so or not, at and, this point. And even non believers accept it. Of course, yeah. that's right. Halloween is our time to talk about this stuff. And of course, we're interested year round, but, but the whole world starts to pay attention. And I love that. I love that. So, okay, you sent us another photo, too. This, you know, altars I totally understand. You know, maybe you've got your mantle or your fireplace where you put pictures of your, your deceased sure. loved ones. I mean, it's, it's a way to honor the, those that came before us. But you also have a, a, a bull skull, right? Correct. And there it is. Tell us about that. Um, some witches are, are necromancers, um, meaning that they purposely summon the dead to work with them. Most often you use a human skull. Um, a friend of mine who's, you know, uh, fairly known, he, he has a human skull. Um, I prefer a bull skull. Right. Um, and I actually ended up with this bull skull by accident. <laughs> So, um, how do, I, how I do you end up with a bull skull by accident? <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, Come on, happens. Andrew. It just seems, it just seems to be <laughs> the Your energy. TSA attract. in the airport. Yeah. Oh. This isn't mine, but I'll take it. <laughs> this is yours now. <laughs> so right. I'm like, oh, lovely. Um, and I use the skull in, in necromantic rituals to sure. summon the dead. And this, cool. this starts to freak people out. The friend she's talking yes. about is Christian Day. Yes. I've held the skull. Yeah. Robert, I believe he calls Robert. him. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was at a funeral for um, uh, Sean Poirier um, years ago. And Christian was presiding over that with the skull and going around. You know, the, the, the little Catholic boy in there yeah. is just, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is way out of my league. But I mean, but, uh, but I get it. You know, um, here's this thing. And, and Christian would tell you, too. You know, the, the shock and awe is part of it. You know, I mean, it, it's shaking you out of your, mm -hmm. your comfort zone. So I, I understand it. You know, here's, here's a literal skull of an of a animal, whether it's a human being or a bull or whatever, um, you know, to, to kind of shake you up a bit. Now, when you talk about necromancy, does that start to make the, you know, the, the Christian right around you, uh, not Christian day, the yeah. Christian right around you a little bit uh, unnerved? They, they stay away <laughs> for the most part. Um, I mean, the ones that would cause trouble usually tend to stay away. I actually have a lot of Christian friends okay. um, who, who have been present at some of the gatherings. I invite them, I say, you know, so that they can see there's nothing scary. There are no demons running around. You know, there's no wild times going on at, at the Sabbaths, uh, you know. So um, a, a lot of Christians are very open. Um, sure. Some of the more conservative ones aren't. That's okay. That's their prerogative. Um, but... You know, it, I, it's the one reaction or the other. I either get, oh, hey, there she is, or, oh, there she is. You know, <laughs> let's cross the street. So, right. And I'm okay with that. So no wild times at your gatherings. No, no, no need to invite us then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're we're, Sorry, we're holding yeah. out for those. Okay, so we're talking about witchcraft. Uh, Salem, Massachusetts, we know is, is uh, witch mecca. You've been up there. I, you know, we have a photo of you there at the, um, the witch's memorial. Mm -hmm. um, for, for the people that lost their lives during the, the Salem witch trials. What does it mean to be a witch and visit uh, a city like Salem? Well, I have, I have some friends that are non-witches that they, you know, when I, I go each year mm -hmm. and I actually, sometimes I go a couple of times a year and they, the joke is, Oh, she's going to the motherland. <laughs> so, right. um, and it's sort of what it is. I mean, it feels like home. I mean, you, you're, you're among others that are just like you. You don't have to explain too many things when you're having a conversation about a certain type of candle for a certain purpose. Or um, when I go to the memorial, I, I feel awful for what happened to those people. Sure. Um, and that's, you know, I, I, I try to make it a point to, to visit that as often as I can when I go just to kind of pay my respects and, and thank them for, unfortunately, with their blood, they paid the, paved the way for the rest of us. So let's, let's talk about witches and some of the stereotypes. And Eric, if you could bring up uh, image 11, that would just be perfect right now. You know, the pointy hat. <laughs> <laughs> and there you are, yeah, totally are. feeding it. Uh, you know, people think about witches, uh, you know, whether it's based on, you know, Sabrina the Teenage Witch or, or back to the TV show Bewitched or, of course, Wizard of Oz, yeah. you know, the green skin and so on. Um, you know, I, I, what's the stereotype today, though? It seems like we've come a long way since then. 
We have. Um, well, for one, I hate to break it to you, but witches really don't fly. <laughs> uh, what? We wish, yeah, we wish we could, but we don't. Um, Not like even said, astral projection? No, it would save on gas, gas prices, I but... The pointy hat, actually, that picture was at Christian's uh, Halloween ball. It was in the upstairs room uh, where he was paying tribute to uh, Tituba, who was the supposed witch um, that kind right. of started the whole frenzy with the girls. Sure. Um, the black pointy hat was actually very in fashion a long time ago. Uh, people with money wore it. Women wore them. Men wore them. Kids wore them. Um, and it just kind of became associated with the witch after the fad wore off. Um, so that's, I mean, that's another one. We don't, we don't worship a devil. Uh, we don't acknowledge a devil. We don't acknowledge Satan. We don't acknowledge a hell. Um, that's, that's a Christian ideology. So, um, I mean, there's, there's so many, uh, there's uh, not every witch is Wiccan. Right. There's a, there is a difference. Um, just Wiccans not now, now uh, Crystal. So Wiccans are—they're basically teenage girls mad at their parents, right? No, eh, no, not come at on, <laughs> come on. I, I know a few older Wiccans that right. you know be shaking their finger <laughs> at that comment. But um, <laughs> I'll take it's it. actually a, it's actually a religion. It's a federally recognized religion, Wicca. Sure. No, and it's and it hasn't been around that long. Um, no. That's the it's that's the thing. Uh, the it's 1940. Oh, right. in, the, in the states, it's it, it's. It was um, it was around in England longer than it has been in the states. It was against the law up to I think nineteen fifty six in England to be a witch. You could be arrested up to yeah. I think nineteen fifty six being a witch in England. Mm-hmm. So let's get back to witches and, and the paranormal because the paranormal is such a hot topic now. I mean, it's on so many television shows. We've got psychics looking for ghosts. We've got ghost investigators yep. looking for ghosts using equipment, using every method under the sun, and. Because of all that, you've got a lot of people who believe they live in haunted homes, right? Yeah. Who are calling folks like us, yep. folks on the television show, folks like, like Crystal. And when you come in, is there an expectation among people that uh, own these houses? Like, well, where's your thermal cameras? Where's all the stuff I see on TV? Uh, is there an education process you have to go through before getting into uh, an investigation yourself? Uh, well, just to clarify, when I do investigations, I always go with a paranormal team. Okay. So you have all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm 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 pretty strict about that um, because I I love science and I love to see scientific proof of things. And you know, if something's coming through for me, like your friend uh, with her granddaughter, if something's coming through for me, I, I can't tell you how exhilarating that is to have that validated with actual scientific proof. So, um, if for me, it's it's exhilarating. It's exciting. Um, and I, I have, I do have a good time doing it. Mm-hmm. And it's, do you, do you think that, um, well, I mean, that's, it's easy to wear different hats, right? You can be just crystal, the psychic medium where witchcraft is almost irrelevant at that point. Um, or being, for me, being a witch is a lifestyle. Um, I, right. I love the color black. It's, I, I'm always yes. wearing black. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that there's a, there's a stereotype, but not all witches wear black. I just happen to be one that does. Um, it's pretty obvious of what I am when I come in. I mean, I have my my pentagram around my neck. I have um, my bracelet, which is a, which is protection for us. Sure. But um, and did you know that every paranormal investigator wears black? Have you not seen all the black T-shirts? They all wear black. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen it's everywhere. It's rampant. So black's a, a very popular color in our community. It's I slimming. Guess. It is slimming. We're it bucking the trend everything. with red, but that's for a whole other reasons. All right, Crystal, <laughs> loved having you here. We're right up uh, at the end of the show, but I do want to thank you for coming on, talking about witchcraft, Sleepy Hollow, and and your approach to it. I think it's great. Um, Thanks. You for know, me. the paranormal. There's as many approaches to it as there sure. are paranormal investigators. Yeah. Whether it's gear, whether it's psychic abilities, witchcraft, Christianity, priests, rabbis, you right. name it, we're all here at the table. And I think the the most important yeah. part is that we keep talking about it. So, Crystal, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Until next time, folks, stay odd.